Hi, I'm Kelly Thompson. I'm a leadership coach and we're talking about imposter syndrome today. Maybe you've heard this term and if you haven't, if you look it up, it is the fear of being exposed as a fraud or being found out or to have, you know, some sort of fear of having like a spectacular failure. And you know, it's something that we all feel. It's it's a feeling that we get when we are stretching our comfort zone or we're doing something new. I feel imposter syndrome all of the time, especially when I left corporate America and went out on my own and in corporate America when I got promoted or I had high stakes meetings or a big presentation. You know, the one that I can think of the most was when I was called to present and do leadership development training for a group of medical leaders. And these people were smart. They had more degrees than I'll ever attain. And they knew a lot of stuff about really detailed, important, life-saving things. And I remember sitting outside the room before I was called to present, thinking to myself, who are these people to listen to me, I mean, who am I to be listened to? And you know what, this is it. This is gonna be the time where people are gonna see right through me and I'm gonna fail and I'm gonna say something silly and they're gonna call me out because they're gonna know. Have you guys ever thought these things? That's what imposter syndrome feels like. It's when we get called to do something really big, even if it's something we really, really wanted, it's like that creeping feeling where we're like, oh, this is this is when it ends. <laughs> this is when I'm gonna be found out. Guys, it's we're not immune from imposter syndrome. Everybody feels imposter syndrome, even famous people. Michelle Obama has talked about how she's felt imposter syndrome when she's been pulled up to that next level. Sheryl Sandberg, the COO of Facebook, has felt imposter syndrome when she's in big meeting rooms presenting big things. Lady Gaga has talked about it. So that's super helpful in actually giving us some clues on how we can move past it. So how can we move past imposter syndrome and really bring our most clear and confident self to whatever challenge we're being called to do? The first thing is just to name it. Just by simply naming it, we can reduce its power. Just by saying, oh, there it is again, there's that imposter feeling syndrome. I know what this feels like. Or just saying, I'm gonna do something big and I know that imposter syndrome feeling is going to come back again. The second thing that you can do is you can just, you know, just notice it. You know what, I notice I'm having this feeling without actually identifying it. There's that imposter syndrome feeling again. Yep, I notice I'm having it and I'm probably gonna have it again just normalize it. So we're going to notice it, we're going to name it, and then we're going to normalize it. You know what? Imposter syndrome is normal. Lots of people feel imposter syndrome when they're getting ready to do big things. The last thing I would ask yourself is, is this feeling just really all that helpful? And you know what? Sometimes we can reframe it to say, you know what? This is a normal, helpful feeling that I feel when I'm doing big things. Imposter syndrome is a good sign. It means I'm stretching my comfort zone and I'm putting myself out there. If the feeling starts to weigh on you too much, you might wanna ask yourself, what would be a more helpful feeling in this moment to help me build my confidence? What are three things or three facts that I know about myself to be true that I can choose to think of instead, instead of reflecting on my imposter syndrome? I hope these quick tips um, help you build your confidence for those big things that come at you in your career. If you want more tips like this, I do five-ish minute confidence tips all the time on my social media at Kelly Ray Thompson, or you can check out my career and confidence building coaching programs at kellyraythompson.com.